about the chances you guys being out here in the middle of nowhere? Guess tonight's your lucky night. <sighs> Ah, hello Warlight Web, I'm Dr. Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair, and Friday the 13th is just around the corner! Assuming this video clears copyright on time. And you know what that means. I finally have an excuse for reviewing the fourth and so far last Hatchet movie, Victor Crowley. For you see, the Hatchet series focuses on slasher killer Victor Crowley, whom in every Hatchet movie has been portrayed by the man, the legend, Kane Hodder. And if this is your first time experiencing anything related to the horror genre, allow me to point out that Kane Hodder has been in a ton of horror features and is perhaps most well known for his portrayal as Jason Voorhees in several of the Friday the 13th movies. So that's my excuse for picking this flick this week, but what is it about? After all, every Hatchet movie takes place right where the last one left off, and the last one ended on the final, true, and complete destruction of Victor Crowley. Well, it turns out he's back, and a small group of miscellaneous personalities find themselves in Honey Island Swamp and are picked off in just under 90 minutes. So, is really not trying to reinvent the wheel here, but let's take a look at Victor Crowley and see if it's at least still got the spirit. We open up. Not where the last movie left off, but way back when in 1964. This is still post-Crowley tragedy, but still well before any of the Hatchet movies, as we meet Sue, played by Kelly Vrooman, enjoying an evening with her boyfriend, Del, played by Jonah Ray. But perhaps he won't be her boyfriend for much longer, as they could be engaged! And she is not nearly emotionally stable enough to handle that. Uh, I want you to be mine forever. I want to buy you soda pop and candy for the rest of our lives until we die. Just take the ring, please. <laughs> well, it's good to know this movie starts strong with its horror. But this uh, touching moment is cut short when Dell hears weird cries in the swamp. So, of course, they go off to investigate. Perhaps the cries are someone who needs help. Isn't this where that boy died on Halloween? That mongoloid Crowley kid? Because that's mean, Dale. Everyone says he was a monster. What happened to him? And of course, the perfect spot Dell picked to pop the question was Honey Island Swamp in the middle of the night. Gotta hand it to the man, this place is known for life changing experiences. First things first, though, gotta find where those cries are coming from. Sounds like it's coming from right over there. <laughs> Hey kids, look, it's Tyler Maine! You know, Michael Myers from the Rob Zombie Halloween movies, and you know what that means. Another epic showdown between Victor Crowley and another horror icon! Let me give you a word of advice and listen close, because it might just save your life someday. NEVER! <laughs> or he can be unceremoniously snuffed out in half a second. Oh, and real quick, I just gotta remind the censors at YouTube that this is a movie. Tyler Maine is an actor, and is in fact still alive, and was not decapitated. And as anyone could tell, those effects are anything but convincing. So, no, no fight. Victor Crowley just takes him out before chasing down the couple, killing Dell all quick and easily, so he can take his time with Sue, chopping her arms and legs off, and saving her head for last. <laughs> And if only they heeded the strange man's advice. Never! Just never! This is followed up by a little recap of the Hatchet franchise for those who haven't been paying attention in class. Crowley Kid was born disfigured because of a voodoo curse, as you get in Louisiana. Local kids were jerks, and one Halloween night tried to scare him out of his house with fireworks. But wouldn't you know it, the fireworks worked to set a fire to the house, and Victor's father tried desperately to save him by chopping down the door with a hatchet. He didn't know that Victor was on the other side trying to get out. And both of them just completely forgot how doors work at the time. So he killed his own son, accidentally. But that cursed Victor's ghost to return every night, hunting and killing poor fools who wander into Honey Island Swamp. Everyone who's ever seen Victor Crowley has died, except for one. To explain this, we suddenly shift tones drastically to Sabrina, played by Crystal Joy Brown. She's a talk show host, and in today's episode, she's talking to the one and only survivor of the Honey Island Swamp Massacres, Andrew Young, played by Perry Shen. And of course, there was the 2008 trial, the civil lawsuits, the accusations, Our the divorce. Which is actually hostile territory, as it turns out Sabrina is Andrew's ex-wife, and she believes that there's a much better explanation for all those bodies that piled up in the swamp other than the ghost did it. 
It's been ten years since he survived that harrowing ordeal, but the reason he's here today is to talk about his first-hand account written about in his new book, I, Survivor. Though Sabrina is far, far more interested in talking about how Andrew's DNA was all over the place, and not one scrap of evidence in support of Victor Crowley ever surfaced, despite Andrew's exoneration. You are like the O.J. Simpson of Honey Island Swamp, wouldn't you say? Um, uh, no. Never scored a single touchdown in that swamp. Ran a lot of yards, though. Enough of that show for now, though, we've got to introduce more characters. The indie filmmaker, Chloe, played by Katie Booth, her other half, Alex, played by Chase Williamson, and our friend and gore effects specialist, Rose, played by Laura Ortiz. I need to stop on the way to get more supplies for my kit. Wait, but we'll miss the book signing. Do you want fake blood in your horror movie or not? Well, it depends. Are we going for quality or quantity? Or Evil Dead style? You know, both. Chloe says they're gonna have to hurry so they can get the blood and get to the book signing. But a book means a publisher, which means a publicist, which introduces Andrew's publicist, Kathleen, played by Felissa Rose. You know, Angela from Sleepaway Camp. Also, just because she's on Team Andrew, that doesn't mean she's on his side completely. Everywhere I go, people still act like I, 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 I. Like you chapter 40 or something people in the swamp and you blamed it on a make-believe ghost? Yeah, there's more like 50-some-odd if you count the ones off-screen. Whether she believes or not isn't the point anyway. She's just here to make sure that the both of them capitalize on the 10-year anniversary of the massacre and get paid. And then you put it behind you, and you spend the rest of your life counting your money back in Japan. I'm from Baton Rouge. And I'm Chinese. Uh, yeah, but nobody's itching to get a vacation home in China. No time to waste, it's on to the book signing. Chloe and pals are a bit further back in line than she'd like, but no bother. Andrew Young has arrived! But of course, this book signing is not what it seems. Which one? <gasps> oh! Could you do one to Christina with a K, and one for my dad? His name's Bill. It's also a comedy! And a horror movie, so out come the girls. But it's also a commentary on the willingness of low-budget slashers to be very liberal in terms of female full frontal showcases, but have a bit of double standard when it comes to the male equivalent. Can make it out to Linus. Sorry, I, I, I don't sign up. Those. And unintentionally, this also seems to work as a commentary on the overly censorious nature of the modern internet, as originally both aspects were on full display, and they might still be if you have the physical copy of this, but on streaming services, they both have been edited out completely. And I have this on Amazon Prime. Paid for it. Means I'm gonna have to look elsewhere if I wanna see Kelly Cook's wreck. But Chloe finally makes it to the front and has a chance to pitch Andrew her project. A movie based on the true story of the Victor Crowley incident. And the chance to get Andrew Young to play Andrew Young in the mock trailer they're filming later today. But Kathleen interrupts them and very quickly hurries Andrew out of there. Sorry kids, the book signing is cancelled. We've got something far more important to do. I don't care what show is for. Okay, I've told you a thousand times, I'm never going back to that swamp. Remember that part in Jurassic Park 3 where Dr. Grant refused to go back to the island? But I got them up to a million! <sighs> it's just like that. Never underestimate the power of a big paycheck. Kathleen tells him not to worry so much. Honey Island Swamp's gotta be safe. It's been a huge tourist destination for the last decade. Besides, this plane isn't even landing in Honey Island Swamp. It can't. It's not amphibious. They're gonna fly two miles out, then get to the swamp via boat. Plenty of time to introduce new characters. Camera and sound, Austin, played by Brian Quinn, and Casey, played by Tiffany Shepsis, plus makeup, Jay, played by Tez Yancey, and then of course we've got the host that will be interviewing Andrew. Would you look at that? Sabrina! What kind of winds of fate have managed to put them together again? Probably this movie's incredibly low budget that has kept the cast very small. Also, if you squint way in the back there, you can see Zack, played by Blake Woodruff, but he's not important yet. First, we gotta head to Honey Island Swamp, where the Honey Island Swamp tour takes place. That's where Chloe and her friend have headed, so they might film their mock trailer. As such, they meet up with the actor Chloe hired, Dylan, played by Dave Sheridan. I'm Dylan. Actor. Tour guide, but mostly actor. Why are you getting plenty of practice when 20 times a day you gotta be like, And some say Victor Crowley still haunts this swamp to this day! And if you keep it up, you might get in some method acting. 
Fortunately for them, they will have more than enough privacy to film the trailer. After all, it's been 10 years. Victor Crowley just doesn't draw the crowds like he used to, and Hunley Island Swamp is just about dead come nightfall. But that doesn't mean there's no demand for feature films. They're shooting like five Victor Crowley movies as we speak. Two are like straight up slashers, one some jump scare ghost movie thing, and I think the other two are remakes. And there's the mobile game, Swamp Runner, the Happy Meal toys, and of course the Netflix adaptation, but that one turned Reverend Zombie into a three-legged albino crossdresser. Point is, if they're gonna film their mock trailer, they gotta get the lines right. And always a stickler for details, Chloe of course scripted the real voodoo curse that really brought Victor Crowley back into their trailer itself. But Rose has no idea how to pronounce it, so they pull up YouTube. Hey, is this really necessary? The curse that created Victor Crowley? It's only the most important part of the movie I'm making. Yeah, but YouTube? Come on, creators gotta self-censor themselves so much anymore, you'll be lucky to find a version that isn't half obscured by Minecraft sound effects and air horns. As they play video after video, trying to make sure they get it absolutely right, suddenly Andrew's aircraft begins going haywire! There's like 50 different ways of saying this. I told you, it really doesn't matter if you get it exactly right, because- I'm just gonna assume that Victor's spirit did a number on the plane as he shot down from heaven back to Earth. Which does mean that technically, Crowley was in the moral right this whole time. Wondering where this dead guy came from, their questions are soon answered when they hear the airplane crash down within Honey Island Swamp! So Dylan and Rose run off to help them while Alex stays with Chloe, who is hyperventilating, leaving behind the body and the phone that has the Crowley curse with autoplay on. <laughs> Thus, it's suddenly nightfall where we find ourselves back at the airplane. Despite the crash, it seems most of the people are still intact. I mean, the pilots are dead and Jay didn't make it, and I have no idea where Zach evaporated off to, but all things considered, that's not bad. Even better, Dylan and Rose found the airplane without much difficulty. Hey, you're that guy. Not, no, no. I've signed enough squishy things for one day, I'd rather not we get sidetracked as we line up everybody so I can put my John Hancock on random livers and kidneys. But Casey is stuck, and the water level is slowly rising as the airplane sinks into the swamp. Terrified, she doesn't want to be left alone and begs to know where Austin is. I don't know how to tell you this, but Austin's dead. Dude, I'm right here. Austin's alive. Well, like four out of six of the men aboard already dead, the guy was probably going to be right. And it's super important that Austin and Casey survive this, because she's like, Hey, I'm having your kids, so might not want to let me drown, okay? Also, it's been like hours, so Chloe is finally calm enough that she and Alex can move forward to assist the others. However... Now that isn't the correct way to say the curse created for Crowley already isn't we get a little cameo of Tony Todd as Reverend Zombie saying the voodoo curse on his YouTube channel. Also, for some reason, even though the phone was on with its screen up and sound going, they still never managed to find it. Leaving Casey and Austin on the plane, Dylan tells the rest that he's got tools in his boat that they can use to cut Casey free, saving her life. So it's time to head back. But then... Back on the plane. Now! The cries of Victor Crowley echo through Honey Island Swamp. As well as the cries of Andrew Young, but that, that's more in the sense of literal crying. Dylan isn't phased by some prankster calling out for daddy, but Andrew says that he will beg for his if he doesn't get back on the plane at once. You think I'm scary? The thing in the woods is death itself. It's coming for all of us. Now get inside if you want to live through this. I just did. Man, this guy's persuasive. I should hire Perry Shen to uh, convince people to like my videos and subscribe if you haven't already, or else, or, or, or else I'll also tell you about my Patreon and how you can become a channel member for spooky tales every month. So they get back on the plane and we switch perspectives back to Chloe and Alex. They find those weird cries in the swamp strange, but they, they must be getting close to the crash site. First things first, gotta go through the tour of the Crowley residence. Or what's left of it, as it blew up, burnt down, and has mostly been replaced by an information kiosk. Shh! I'm here! <gasps> Which also doubles as a handy-dandy shelter in case of emergencies. And yes, a Crowley on the loose is definitely an emergency. 
Back on the plane, though, Austin is confused that his wife's brave rescuers just doubled back and decided to hide in here. But Andrew points out that no one is leaving this plane, or they will all die! Because they're only safe in here. Or not. Uh, Victor could easily get inside with a random belt sander, actually. Hopefully no one left a belt sander out there for the past ten years, right? So we have established that there is actually no benefit to holding up a defensive position because no position can actually defend you from Victor Crowley getting in. And yet still we are going to spend most of the rest of this movie on this plane. Because. But not all of it, after all. Chloe and Alex are still holed up in that info shed. But hey, that motion sensing light is probably just on the fritz. Nothing to be worried about. I mean, if we're gonna hide in here, we might as well turn off. But it's Victor Crowley back from the dead! Again! Using a handy dandy hammer, Victor bashes Alex's face in, smashing his eyes before tearing his head off. So Chloe runs for her life. So we can hop right back to the airplane where most of the characters are like, hey, Andrew, filming a horror movie in one small room has been done before and no one liked it then, so why are we doing it now? Oh, and the fact that he's threatening them at knife point to stay put while most of those present still believe he's the real killer and yeah, not doing himself any favors here. But who should happen to show up outside but Chloe? But they can't communicate with each other. The airplane is just about soundproof. Therefore, they can't warn her about the killer who's right behind her. I mean, I, mean, I, I guess they could if someone took some lipstick and wrote backwards on one of the windows. But I, I mean, she'd know by the time they'd finish. And they lose track of the two of them anyway. At least until Victor SMASHES Chloe's face through the window! Now, this window is clearly large enough that even stocky old Mr. Crowley can easily slip through, but we're just gonna pretend it isn't. Victor instead walks off, dragging Chloe with, and tries a new strategy. Kill him with suspense! I wonder where he's gone off to, and what plans he has for the immediate future. Probably killing, and the use of various power tools. Andrew's like, see? Told you he's real. Also, we better get out there and get to work trying to save Casey. Dylan's like, uh, we just learned Crowley is real and is out there and you want to head out there now? Come on, you know how this worked. You survived. At which point Andrew explains he only survived because Crowley ran off after some mysterious voices and it just so happened the National Guard swooped in to save the day. How convenient. <laughs> I thought you single-handedly fought off Victor Crowley and tried to save as many as you could. But it turns out that I Survivor involves a little bit of a artistic license. And you would think that not just the legal exoneration, but the fact that the appearance of Victor Crowley has absolutely proven Andrew was innocent might mean that Sabrina has even the slightest change of heart, but nope. She's just angry now because the writing was trash and the dedication was awful. Yeah, more important things right now. Looky here, Chloe is still alive, but Andrew realizes he's using her as bait. But as they wonder what to do, something slithers in from the gaping hole in the side of the plane! Stop! It's just a water snake, it's not gonna hurt anybody! Snakes? On a plane? In a panic, Kathleen runs out of the plane, and when Austin goes after her, Victor slices his skull open, leaving his brains to spit out onto the floor. And before Kathleen can escape, Victor tears her arm off, then jams it through her, her phone still locked in her grasp. So, two down, and he's still got that bait. <laughs> or not. Um, hey guys, we're gonna have any crisis situation pop up to replace that, because, uh, I mean, that was kind of important. I, I suppose we still have Casey, she's still stuck, and they need to get some way to cut the seats off her before she drowns and... Ah! Man, they are really bad at this. So, uh, update. The situation is that they are on the plane and have no reason to leave. Well, that's fantastic. It does mean we can get closure on some stuff, though. Andrew mentions how he's here because he was promised a million bucks. And Sabrina laughs at this because, hey, seems Kathleen made up the million dollar story. Andrew is only going to get maybe 20 grand for this. And also, it's not just his trash writing that makes Sabrina hate him, but the fact that his book is merely his way to exploit tragedy to line his own pockets with cash. 
Rose points out that actually, as a talk show host, Sabrina, you too exploit the less fortunate as a means to become wealthy. And your talents are so shallow you will be easily replaced by a younger model the minute your looks begin to fade. And Rose admits as she was working on a movie about real life suffering, she too is a horrible person as well. Maybe we're all getting what we deserve. I, 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 I didn't do anything bad. No, shut up, Dylan! Hey, there's plenty of ways to earn yourself a horror movie death, and believe me, being a terrible actor is definitely one of them. Rose also points out that they maybe kind of sort of accidentally revived Victor Crowley when they put on that Victor Crowley Resurrection Voodoo Curse for 10 Hours video from YouTube. At which point Dylan does what any good YouTuber does and plugs his channel. It's called Chillin' with Dylan. I got 86 subscribers. Well, 85 now. And sadly, no, that is not a real channel. It's a shame, they missed a prime viral marketing opportunity right there. Anyway, as Sabrina explains, her master plan to survive the night is just stay here in this one set. BAM! Victor Crowley tosses the body of Kathleen at the open window, which means they can grab the phone. But nobody knows Kathleen's password, so their only hope is for someone to call again and answer before it's too late, which hopefully will be soon because Victor Crowley is finally trying to get in there. Somebody actually lost the phone stand around here for 10 years! Hey, it's part of the Honey Island Swamp Swamp Tour! You gotta have the hatchet, the belt sander, and let's not forget the big ol' log and chainsaw! Or maybe we can, as the belt sander and hatchet are all he's got. But what's this? When Victor goes for the wiring, they learn the jet still has power, therefore... The engine outside! If we can fire it up, we'll have something to fight back with! Huh? Did you ever see a bird go through a jet engine? It's like a flying wood chipper! Set to puree! So Dylan heads into the cockpit to, uh, wish he spent a little more time playing Microsoft Flight Simulator, while Sabrina and the others decide it's about time to skedaddle. So when Victor Crowley breaks in, oh, would you look at that, not a soul on board. But Andrew isn't going to just run away, no. He tells the girls to get to safety, while he heroically stands behind to fight Victor Crowley. Hey! Remember! Well, it's a thought that counts. So he must run, but wait! The jet engine turns on and isn't doing anything from that far away. So we continue the chase. Rose and Sabrina are making good time, but what's this? Sabrina steals the phone from Rose and leaves her to die. As Crowley is approaching fast, Rose hides as best she can, climbing up a tree as the ghost paces just below her, looking for his prey. And if he can hear a teardrop, I'm kind of surprised he hasn't heard her breathing. Or her heartbeat. So Crowley is off for gorier pastures, while Sabrina has taken the time to make it all the way to Dylan's boat. But whoopsie! It would appear in her rush to sacrifice everyone else and save her own skin, she neglected to take into account that this thing requires keys, and those keys are still on Dylan. And now she's all alone, desperately trying to hide from Victor Crowley. And oh, would you look at that? The phone starts ringing. It's a good thing we took that time to establish Victor Crowley's superhuman sense of hearing, easily able to discern a... a phone ringing loud enough to wake the dead, uh, amidst the cacophony of... very quiet night at the swamp. And one chop is all it takes to get Sabrina off the air. Also, next to no movie left, so Rose just runs back to the airplane where Andrew and Dylan are waiting, and is followed by Victor Crowley. But Andrew has a flare gun! <laughs> Nice shot! Yeah, well, I was aiming for his ball, so... And he's a ghost, does he even have them? I mean, unless we're playing Sniper Elite or Bullet Storm, I'm not sure what you're trying to accomplish here. But Crowley is still coming, so Rose punches him in the face! Before taking Victor Crowley's hatchet and... <laughs> returning it to the homicidal poltergeist. Now, those things are heavier than they look. But Andrew has another flare! I guess he was aiming for the head that time. Sight must be off on that thing. But before Victor can rearm himself, Andrew knocks him back into the jet engine. Almost. With no time to lose before Victor can free himself from this predicament. <laughs> Dylan rushes forth to sacrifice himself and save Rose. 
and Andrew, I guess. I mean, he's kind of the final girl of the Hatchet franchise, but if we learned anything from Hatchet 1, 2, and 3, it's... He could die, and he'll just be back next movie anyway. The end! Yeah, it's the classic Hatchet-style ending where things just suddenly stop, so they can suddenly start up again in a potential sequel. Unless, of course, you count the mid credit scene where we see the news of the return of Victor Crowley does not go unnoticed. By Mary Beth Dunstan. Played by Danielle Harris. You remember her? She was, she was like the main character in every single Hatchet movie before, and I guess just all this time wasn't actually as important as Perry Shen, but... Uh, nevertheless, that was Victor Crowley. And it's nice to finally have another Hatchet movie, but it, it, it was kind of... Eh? Hatchet was always a low-budget affair and more of a homage to horror than its own intriguing story, but Victor Crowley takes that to a whole new level. Now it's a homage to its own series, and while it goes through the paces, Victor Crowley really doesn't give the audience a lot to get excited for moving forward. Besides the fact that the truly full and completely really killed Victor Crowley has now come back from the dead again, and as the previous movies already established the lore surrounding his existence as a repeater-type ghost, we can be sure that the jet engine was a mere inconvenience, and by tomorrow night he'll be all better and ready for Hatchet 5, Victor Crowley Part 2. So, with nothing to establish for the long run other than the return of Victor Crowley, the movie is left merely trying to entertain us for the 90-minute running time, with interesting sets, creative kills, and likable characters. And, uh, is a one out of three ain't bad? The slasher dispatcher master doesn't disappoint when it comes to variety, but the TV producers, book publicists, and indie film crew sets of characters make this a self-aware movie about being a self-aware movie within a self-aware movie. That's where most of the humor stems from, and if that doesn't do it for you, well, uh, not much else to see here. Especially considering the sets, once the mayhem starts, consist of the airplane, the land directly outside the airplane, more swampland, and a criminally underutilized Honey Island Swamp tourist attraction. Yeah, that location also leans even more into the self-aware nature of everything, but we got like one kill there, and 90% of the rest over at the crashed airplane everyone refused to leave. At the end of the day, Victor Crowley did just enough to kinda sorta explain how the ghost of Victor Crowley can return after being truly, finally, ultimately, and completely destroyed, but it didn't give us the best movie to frame that around, getting caught up in talking about making horror movies instead of being one. Coming in at two incredibly convenient Swamp Belt Sanders out of five. It's not abhorrent, and as a fan of the Hatchet franchise, I did enjoy watching Victor Crowley stomp around Honey Island Swamp again, but I mean, they, they really could have done so much better. Thank you all for watching, I've been Decker Shadow, and remember, never, just never, and I'm Chinese. Are you sure? And if you're interested in seeing the Doctor for a second opinion, may I suggest Dr. Wolfula's review of Victor Crowley right there? Or you can always check out my review of the original Hatchet, or the algorithmically selected recommended video, random, don't know what it is.